Father, we come to you in Jesus' name. Lord, we thank you for your presence in the service this morning and how you spoke to our hearts. Lord, I pray that one more time, God, you pour out your spirit in this place tonight. God, help us to enter in and to worship you in spirit and in truth. Lord, let your word one more time encourage us and help us. Show us the way that you have us to walk tonight. Lord God, we just give you thanks and praise for all that you're going to do. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. 
Oh uh-huh.
Without your heart's cry tonight, God, just have your way in me. Help me to get out of the way so that you can have your way. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, James. Thank you, singers and musicians. Go ahead and grab them. Turn to Daniel chapter 3. Daniel chapter 3. I want to share a message tonight entitled, What the Devil Meant for Evil, God Will Make It Good. What the Devil Meant for Evil, God Will Make It Good. We're going to look at Daniel 3 in just a moment. But listen to this illustration before we get into the scriptures tonight. When fear melts into freedom, a small little bird was trapped in a net ball <laughs> containing bird food near our back window. It was flutter, flut, fluttering about, trying to escape. We went out to help it, but when it saw us coming, it chirped furiously in panic. We pulled down the net, the bird attached, and held it gently, speaking softly to the little guy. At this point, he was listless and tired from trying to escape for perhaps hours. We carefully and gently cut the net from around its legs and gently set it on the picnic table. It immediately flew away in freedom. Its initial panic eventually yielded to let one much more powerful yet gentle release it from bondage. Isn't it true for us as well? When God sees us trapped, we often struggle to escape by our own devices Yet we consistently fail until we yield to God's gentle and gracious power to release us. Only then do we find true freedom. Amen. God's desire for you tonight is for you to live free. Amen. To live in the freedom that he purchased through his precious blood. What is Satan's method of operation? We see it throughout uh, Jesus' earthly ministry, throughout the New Testament. He uses fear to intimidate and to immobilize us, if he can, right? He wants to stop us in our tracks with fear and intimidation. He plants thoughts and ideas of hatred, thoughts and ideas of unforgiveness in our minds and our hearts to manipulate us for the purpose of his wicked schemes, if he can get us to buy into it. And I think it was Martin Luther King Jr. who said, I don't remember the quote, I, I should know the quote, I should have the quote, but he says, I re basically, I refuse to let hatred be what drives me. I refuse to hate anyone, amen? Whether it's because of the color of their skin or because even they're, they're, they're my enemy, I choose to love them anyway because that's what God says we should do, amen? Hatred and unforgiveness, the devil likes to use those to manipulate us for the purpose of his wicked schemes. His other modus operandi is to lie to us, isn't it? He lies about giving us control and power over things that he really has no authority to give us. He did it even to Jesus, didn't he? In the temptation in the wilderness, he's offering him things that aren't even his. And he's saying he's going to give him control, and Jesus is like, I already have control of this as a son of God. He does the same to us. Same old devil, same old tricks, isn't it? I'm going to give you control of this. He lies to us about it. We see that in the story of the Babylonian king Nebuchadnezzar that we're going to look at tonight, and his punishment of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, when they refused to bow to his carved image that he made. Many say that uh, it, was, it was basically worship of him, King Nebuchadnezzar. They refused to bow to this image, though, so he threw them, you remember the story, into a fiery furnace. Thank God we have the examples tonight of fierce, unrelenting faith in God from Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. It's more than just a cute children's church story, amen? The faith of these three Hebrew boys ought to today inspire you, amen, to have that same quality of faith in your life tonight. They refused to let Satan's tactics of fear and intimidation and hatred and unforgiveness and control cause them to abandon their God. They're not going to allow it to happen. They refused to bow to the enemy's wicked schemes and they knew that what the devil meant for evil, 
God would make it good. Amen? And we're going to look at some things tonight. Daniel, Daniel chapter 3, starting with verse 22. If you'd like to stand in honor of God's word, if you're able to, you can do that tonight. Daniel chapter 3, starting with verse 22. Therefore, because the, the king's commandment was urgent, and the furnace exceeding hot, the flames of the fire slew those men that took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell, fell down bound into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Then Nebuchadnezzar the king was astonished and rose up in haste and spake and said unto his counselors, Did not we cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? They answered and said unto the king, True, O king. He answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose, walking in the midst of the fire, and they have no hurt. And the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. Then Nebuchadnezzar came near to the mouth of the burning fiery furnace and spake and said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, you servants of the Most High God, come forth and come here. Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came forth of the midst of the fire, and the princes, governors, and captains, and the king's counselors, being gathered together, saw these men, upon whose bodies the fire had no power, nor was a hair of their head singed. Neither were their coats changed, nor the smell of fire had passed on them. Then Nebuchadnezzar spake and said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who has sent his angel and delivered his servants that trusted in him and have changed the king's word and yielded their bodies that they might not serve nor worship any god except their own god. You can be seated this evening. We're going to look at this portion of this story because I believe there's some things the Lord wants to show us that will increase our faith, amen, that will strengthen our faith so that we have faith like these three Hebrew boys did, amen, an unrelenting faith that won't let go of God no matter what. That's what we need. I believe it's what we're going to need in these last days, amen. Before Jesus comes back, we don't need a casual Christianity. We're going to have to have a fierce, unrelenting faith in Jesus that he's going to see us through, amen. And that's what I think we'll see in this passage. Four lessons from what the devil meant for evil in the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Number one, God will sometimes allow the fire of adversity. If you've been saved long enough, you know this, don't you? God will sometimes allow the fire of adversity. If when you got saved, somebody told you you'd never have any more problems, they lied to you. <laughs> You're still going to have problems. You just have the problem solver with you. Amen? You have the way maker with you. You have the God of the impossible with you. And that makes those problems seem so small. Amen? No longer can they be magnified like they were before we came to Jesus. We're going to face some adversity. We're going to face the fire of adversity. And we can see in this passage that we read, this wasn't some type of optical illusion, was it? This fiery furnace and what happened to these three Hebrew boys, this was real. This was a real story. This wasn't a special effect that King Nebuchadnezzar orchestrated when he threw Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego into this fiery furnace. How do we know that? Well, the heat and the flames killed the very men who threw them in. That's how intense and how real this fire of adversity really was. And maybe somebody tells you when you're in your fire of adversity, oh, well, that's all just made up in your mind. Right? It's just an optical illusion. If you'll just make the right confession, it'll all go away. Have you heard that? And yes, we do need to be careful what we say with our mouth, but it needs to be what God says first. And then if we repeat it, then yes, we can stand on that. But if you could confess away all your problems, Jesus didn't have to go to the cross and die, right? You could have just confessed them all away. We need his strength. We need his grace. And we face some real fiery flames of adversity on our own Christian walk. Whether anybody else understands them or not, they're real to us. And they're, they're hard for us sometimes to go through. The devil intended through Nebuchadnezzar to disrupt or hinder or stop the work of God that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were destined and called to be a part of. How many know the devil's still doing that same old business? He's wanting to hinder, he's wanting to disrupt 
or stop the work of God in your life. He's wanting to stop or hinder, destroy the work of God here in this church. And we've got to recognize his evil devices and ask God to help us through what we see in this story. We will face real dangers. We'll face the fear tactics. If you haven't already, you will. That's his silver bullets, fear and unbelief, right? Fear and unbelief. Almost every sin that you commit can be tied back to those two roots, fear and unbelief. We label all these sins and we rate them. God doesn't, right? We label big sins and little sins. We call a white lie a little sin, right? Murdering somebody a big sin and we put a bunch of stuff in between there. God doesn't do that. He says sin is a cancer. It's deadly. It will destroy you no matter how you decide to rate it. He says you need to get sin out of your life. We will face real dangers. We'll face the fear tactics. We'll face the intimidation, the hatred, the downright evil intent, the unforgiveness, the wicked schemes, the control that th Satan thinks he can exercise over us, all to try and stop God's destiny and purpose for our lives. Amen? God has a reason why you're here. He has a reason why you're alive tonight. And he wants, the devil of course wants you to question that. But he has a purpose for each one of us. God has a purpose for each one of us. And we want to see that purpose come to pass. We must not lose faith in who Jesus is. We must not lose faith tonight in what he provided for us at the cross. Do we understand all the benefits of Calvary? All that his blood purchased for us that we couldn't pay for ourselves, but that God paid for on our behalf through Jesus, through his only son. If we understood all the benefits and we said, God, I want to live in every one of those benefits, forgiveness of sins, a hope of heaven, peace of mind, wisdom for the decisions that I face, the power of the Holy Spirit. Those are just a few of the things, right, that Jesus purchased for us through what he did at the cross. We must not lose faith in who Jesus is and in his precious blood, what he purchased for us. We have to be relentless, amen, in our faith. Satan was utterly defeated where? At Calvary, amen? So of course he wants you to get your eyes off of Jesus and off of what he did at Calvary. If he can get you to believe anything else, then he's won. He's gonna disrupt the destiny that God has for your life. But we need to remember Satan was utterly defeated at Calvary and he's not going to win if we keep our faith fixed. If we keep it anchored on who Jesus is, who the Bible says he is, not Hollywood Jesus, not New Age Jesus, but the Jesus of the Bible. We keep our faith there and we trust God no matter what. He is not going to allow the devil to win. We see that in Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. You guys know Isaiah 54, verse 17. Another verse we should commit to memory. No weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. Every tongue that shall rise against you in judgment you shall condemn. This is the heritage of who? The servants of the Lord. And their righteousness is of me, says the Lord. If you're a servant of the Lord, if you're living in covenant love relationship with God, you're a servant of His. And He says, this is what you have as a promise that you can stand on. Amen? No weapon form will prosper. Every tongue that shall rise against you in judgment, you shall condemn. Notice that the weapons will be formed, right? It doesn't say the weapons go away. You'll never see a weapon. You'll never see... Adversity. You'll never have a problem ever again in your Christian walk. It doesn't say that. It says the weapons will be formed, but they just won't prosper. How many know the devil's good at clamoring? He's good at making a lot of noise and stirring up a lot of dust. But he really has no authority to touch you if you stay in Jesus Christ. He has been defeated completely at the cross. And if we stay with our faith anchor where it should be, the weapons will be formed, yes. And if through his clamoring he can get you to stop, through his clamoring and all the noise making and throwing dirt in the air, he can get you to doubt God's purpose and his destiny for your life, he will try. But we need to stand firm, let the dust settle, and stand anchored in who Jesus is. Amen? Anchored in what he accomplished for us at Calvary and know that he's going to see us through no matter what 
adversity we face. The fiery furnace was really there, but all Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego had to do was keep believing God. Amen? Keep believing God. What the devil meant for evil, God was about to make it good. Amen? We know the end of the story, but they didn't at the time, did they? But they knew that whatever was going to happen, if, if, if God allows my life to be taken, I'm not going to bow. I'm not going to give up faith. Whatever the devil meant for evil, they knew God would make it good. Do you have that settled in your heart tonight? I hope you do by the end of this message at least. Notice as well, it says in Isaiah 54, 17, the tongues are going to rise in opposition. What does rise mean? Doesn't mean they'll go away once you get saved, you start living for God, people quit talking about you. We know that doesn't happen, right? It says it's going to increase, right? That's what rise means. It's going to increase. People are going to slander you because you're trying to live for God. Because the enemy's trying to use even people close to you to get you to give up the faith, to abandon this race, this good fight of faith. The tongues are going to rise in opposition to us if we're obeying God, but God will cause them to be condemned. He will cause them to be condemned. I don't have to worry about how to condemn it. He takes care of it. Amen? Give it to God and say, God, you promised, so I trust in you. You're going to make it right. Isn't that what Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego did? Nebuchadnezzar said all kinds of things about them that were lies. Why he had to punish them. Why he had to throw them into the fiery furnace. But God had the final say-so, didn't he? In the end of the story. The slander, the gossip, the backbiting, the lies... The false accusations will come, but what the devil meant for evil, saints of God tonight, what the devil means for evil, God will make it good. Do we trust him? God will make it good. If we'll just trust God, we don't just look to Jesus once. We don't just look to his finished work at the cross once. We keep looking to Jesus. We wake up every morning and say, God, I'm here because of what you did for me. And I'm going to keep looking to you. I'm going to keep looking to the cross and trust that you said, 2 Peter 1, 3, everything that I need for life and godliness, you provided it through your glory and grace. Amen? And I believe it today. I had to believe it yesterday, but God, I believe it today. And we need to trust the Lord. Keep looking to Jesus. Keep looking to the cross. We have this blessed assurance today that if God allows the fire of adversity, it's only to make us more pure. Amen. I think it's 1 Peter 1.8. It says, don't think it's strange, the fiery trial, which is to try you. It's going to happen to every believer. It's not something strange or unusual. It's a refining process. Amen. That God allows in our lives. He, if he has allowed it, it's only to make us more pure. It's only to make us more refined. And it's only to make us more like Jesus. Amen. And say, so we should say, God, help me. Amen. Strengthen my hands. Let me be refined. Let me be made more pure. Let me be made more like you and not give up hope, not let go of my faith during this trial. Amen. God wants to help us. So we can see tonight, number one, God will sometimes allow the fire of adversity. Number two, even those used by Satan for his wicked schemes will soon be astonished. Doesn't that give us hope tonight? Nebuchadnezzar, the king, was astonished, and he rose up in haste, and he spake and said unto his counselors, Did we not cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? They answered and said unto the king, True, O king. He answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose, no longer bound, right? Walking in the midst of the fire, and they have no hurt, and the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. Verses 24 and 25. What an amazing story here. Amen? A story of faith. This word astonished could also be translated, and it is in many translations, as terrified. He threw, does, have you ever had the devil throw everything in the kitchen sink at you? And then God still delivered you? That's what happened here, wasn't it? And so rightfully so, Nebuchadnezzar, he literally threw everything he could at these three Hebrew boys. All the power he had, he threw them into a fiery furnace. I mean, what more severe punishment could he have given them? 
and it did not work. He was terrified because there was a power bigger than him that was stepping in on the scene. He was astonished. He was terrified. King Nebuchadnezzar, being manipulated by the devil, intended to bring terror, didn't he, upon Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, as well as anyone they knew and anyone that witnessed their punishment. It was supposed to be a deterrent. It didn't end up that way, did it? They saw something bigger than King Nebuchadnezzar. But what the devil meant for evil, God made it good. Amen? What the devil intended to do, he was not able to do. God made it good. King Nebuchadnezzar intended to strike terror over all his subjects, but now God has struck terror over him by preserving the lives of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. All the things that Satan's whispering he's going to do in your ear, as I said this morning, if he could do it, he would have already done it. Amen? We need to believe that. If he, was, if he was going to kill you, he would have already done it a long time ago. He can't. He can't touch you if you're in Christ, if you're covered by the blood of Jesus. The terror that the enemy tries to put on you, whether it's through a human being, whether it's demonic spirits or whatever circumstances in your life, God can turn those things around to where they become a terror to the ones who have brought it into your life. Amen? If you're trusting the Lord, remember in your fire of adversity, in your overwhelming storms of life, there are many evil voices in the fire and in the wind. But it is God who gets the final say-so. Amen? Amen? What he, the one who speaks peace be still to the wind and the waves. Doesn't it make you smile tonight? He gets the final say-so. <laughs> the one who can quench the flames of the fire. He created the fire in the, in the first place. He's the one that gets the final say-so in your situation, your storm of life, your fire of adversity. God's going to get the final say-so. God's truth will always prevail over the lies of the enemy. So stop believing those lies, amen? Stop believe, believing what the enemy says about your terrifying circumstances. There's terrifying Yes, and there's, no, there's nothing wrong with, you're not living in a false reality, it's real. This is a real furnace that Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego are in. You can tell God, this is a terrifying circumstance, but trust Him in the midst of it, amen? Don't let the devil's lies influence you that your terrifying circumstances or your terrifying situation is irreversible or unfixable, amen? Is anything too hard for the Lord? No, God delights in what man calls impossible. And if we'll trust him, God says he can turn it around. Amen. What God says is what really matters. And we need to trust him in those difficult times. Number three, the enemy will be terrified when his efforts to cause you to be bound are loosed. Amen. It says in verse 24 and 25 again, Nebuchadnezzar the king was astonished. He rose up in haste. And spake and said unto his counselors, Did we not cast three men into the midst of the fire? They answered and said unto the king, True, O king. He answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose, walking in the midst of the fire, and they have no hurt. And the form of the fourth is like unto the Son of God. Verses 24 and 25. Nebuchadnezzar can't believe his eyes, can he? He's like, Am I crazy? He calls his counselors and says, Do you see what I'm seeing, is this an optical illusion, right? Is this, am I really seeing this? Because didn't we throw these men in bound? And how many know they didn't just tie a loose square knot on their arms? These were prisoners, right? They intended for them to die in this furnace. Heated at seven times its normal temperature. The guards that threw them in were consumed by the flame when they dropped them in. And Jesus God was with them. Jesus is the fourth man, amen, in the fire that was walking among them. Many believe this was a pre-incarnate appearance of Jesus Christ. And he was walking with them and notice they're not bound anymore. And he lets the enemy see that. You intended to cause my people to be bound, but God says, look, they're loosed. The very fire that you threw them into to destroy them, notice the only thing burned in the same flames that consumed the guards who threw these Hebrew boys into the furnace. The only thing burned were the ropes that bound them. Amen. Amen? That was the only thing burned. That's a miracle. 
And that's the kind of miracle deliverance God wants to give each one of us. What Satan intends to be your demise, what he intends to be your destruction, your death could be the very thing that brings even more freedom in your spiritual walk. Do you believe that tonight? God wants to turn those things around. If you'll just keep trusting, if you'll just keep believing, God can get rid of what has bound you and he can bring freedom. He can bring real miraculous deliverance in your situation if you just don't lose faith. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were loosed in the fire of adversity. I would venture to say the worst fire of adversity they had ever faced, wouldn't you? I doubt they had ever had anything anywhere near this kind of punishment. When they refused to bow, I don't think they had any idea what punishment was coming their way. But even in the worst fire of adversity, God loosed them. Amen? He freed them. How did they get free from their ropes of bondage? The fourth man in the fire was with them. Amen? God wants you to know tonight that the fourth man in the fire is with you. Amen? Amen. Jesus is with you. And no matter what storm of life, no matter what fire of adversity you're going through, He's going to see you through. Amen? He didn't bring you to it to stay in it. He came so that you could pass through it. Amen? And be better on the other side. Just like He did Job. And God's going to be with us when we're in that fire of affliction, those storms of life. Listen to this quote by Matthew Henry. They were loose from their bonds. The fire that did not so much as singe their clothes burnt the cords wherewith they were bound and set them at liberty. Those that suffer for Christ have His gracious presence with them in their sufferings, even in the fiery furnace, even in the valley of the shadow of death, and therefore even there they need fear no evil. Amen? Death may be staring you right in the face. Most people who were used mightily of God in the Bible, at some point, they stared death. Even Jesus stared death right in the face. Amen? But they overcame. Amen? They overcame because the Lord was with them. And God will be with us as well if we'll just trust Him. Isaiah 59, verse 19. So shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west, His glory from the rising of the sun, when the enemy shall come in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. The scholars argue where the comma is supposed to be in this verse. We've always quoted it. I grew up quoting the last part of the verse. When the enemy comes in like a flood, comma, the Spirit of the Lord will raise up a standard against him. But most language scholars say the comma is actually misplaced in that reading of it, which is the way most of us probably learned it, right? It should really say, according to most of the experts, when the enemy shall come in, however he comes in, the comma is supposed to go there. Like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord will raise up a standard against him. Amen? He rushes in with whatever tactic he can find. Fear, intimidation, lies, accusations, hatred, animosity. Whatever he can get, use, if we'll open it up and allow him, he'll use those things to manipulate us. But it says when he does that, the Spirit of the Lord will raise up a standard against him. He'll rush to put a standard. And the standard is what Jesus did. His blood, amen, is a standard that is against the attack of the enemy. And we need to understand the only thing that stops the onslaught of the enemy is Jesus and his finished work at Calvary. His precious blood. And say, no devil, the blood of Jesus is against you. You're not going to win. Not today, devil. Amen. You're not going to win. What you meant for evil, God is going to make it good. Amen? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego learned that in this trial. Number four, even after further investigation and scrutiny of the miracle of deliverance, God will get the glory in this story. He'll get the glory in your life, too, if you'll trust Him. Amen? It says, Nebuchadnezzar came near to the mouth of the burning, fiery furnace, and spake and said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, you servants of the Most High God, come forth and come here. Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came forth of the midst of the fire, and the princes and governors and camp captains and the king's counselors being gathered together saw these men. They inspected them, don't you think? Wanted to see up close what's really going on here. They inspected them. 
I think would be a better word, upon whose bodies the fire had no power. They got a close-up, didn't they? They got a real close look at it. Nor was a hair of their head singed, neither were their coats changed, nor the smell of fire had passed on them. That's our God, amen? That's only what God could do. Then Nebuchadnezzar spake and said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who has sent his angel and delivered his servants that trusted in him and have changed the king's word and yielded their bodies that they might not serve nor worship any god except their own god. Verses 26 through 28. So even a pagan, ungodly Babylonian king witnesses the supernatural power of God. Many say that at some point later in his life, he may have even come into covenant relationship with God. I don't believe he did here. He's just saying good things because he was terrified. But I think later on, there's a chance that Nebuchadnezzar, because of Daniel's witness, because of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego's miracle deliverance and their consistent witness, quite possibly he came into covenant love relationship with God. And what are, what are we expecting today? The loss that are all around us. If we'll have faith in Jesus, anchor our faith in what he did for us at the cross, and not be uh, allowing the flames of adversity and the storms of life to knock us off course, it's not only helping us, but it's going to help those around us. Amen? It's going to help the lost see how real our God is, how mighty our God is. Amen? And we need to have that testimony. Let us determine to be true to God, no matter how difficult the pressure or punishment. God's protection transcends anything we can imagine. No human can bind us if God wants us to be free. Do you believe that tonight? Yeah. No human can bind us if God wants us to be free. Trust God in every situation. There are eternal reasons for temporary trials. So be thankful that your destiny is in God's hands, not human hands. Amen? He's sovereign. He's got it all under control. God's not pacing and wringing his hands running his fingers through his hair, trying to figure out how to fix what's going on regarding your destiny. He speaks and things happen. Amen. I believe he sits on his throne. If he just moves his pinky, something happens. Angels take notice of every small, slight movement of God. And he's not, nothing takes God by surprise. A lot of things take us by surprise. But nothing takes God by surprise. And we need to trust him. The constant repetition of the names Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego is not due to poor sentence structure on the part of the Holy Spirit, but instead by design. The Holy Spirit desires the world to know that the same three men who went into the fire came out of the fire. Amen? The fire that was intended to destroy them, it didn't work. Amen? That's going to be your testimony if you'll believe God. What the devil meant for evil, if you'll let God make it good, you may go into the fire, yes, but you're either going to come out at least the same, if not better, refined, made more pure on the other side of that. That's what God's plan is. And that's a testimony, amen? That's the testimony that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego had. They remained faithful, and God brought them through. May we pass the tests of adversity that God allows and be viewed by others as you servants of the Most High God. Amen? What an honor. No greater honor could be said about us. Jesus said the greatest among you is the one who serves. Amen? And that's what Nebuchadnezzar says about these boys. You servants of the Most High God. May we look to be uh, having a testimony that he gave of them as well. Men upon whose bodies the fire had no power. The devil tried, but he didn't succeed. Let people see that in your life. Amen? Don't quit believing God. Don't quit trusting Him. Because it's not only for your own salvation. There's people watching you. And they need to see the miracle power of God bringing deliverance. In fact, people who don't even have the smell of smoke on them. That's who we should be. Amen? We should be people the devil tried. He threw everything in the kitchen sink at us. But it didn't work. Amen? I'm going to believe God. That's the good fight of faith. Amen? I'm going to keep looking to Jesus. I'm going to keep looking to the cross, trusting His finished work, not my own works, because I'm in this race to win it. Amen? I'm in this race to cross the finish line. I'm in this good fight until the final round. 
And I know Jesus will give me the victory in the final round. Amen. That's the kind of faith we've got to have. People who don't even have the smell of smoke on them. Let's let that be us. Amen. What the devil meant for evil, God made it good. And we're not only witnesses of it personally, but everyone around us is as well for the glory of God. Amen. The devil tried, but he lost. May it be said of Bolivar Pentecostal Church, doesn't say no weapon will be formed. They're going to be formed. But let people see that what the devil meant for evil, God made it good. This church is going to be what God wants it to be. If we'll keep looking to Jesus, if we'll keep trusting him, it doesn't mean he's not going to bring slander. He's not going to allow there to be a rise. God may allow there to be a rise of talk, chatter, clamoring of the enemy's weapons being aligned against us. But we will win. The devil will not win if we keep looking to Jesus. We understand the complete victory that he won for us at the cross. And we keep running after him. Amen. He is going to accomplish his sovereign plan in our lives. He's sovereign. Amen. He's not up pacing. He's seated at the right hand of the Father in a place of authority. And that authority is what we have access to. Amen. In the name of of Jesus. There's a lot of things we pray in the name of Jesus and it's not really in the name of Jesus. And we ought to repent. We're asking for selfish things. But when we pray in the name of Jesus, that's like a king with a signet ring who puts his signet ring in that wax and seals a decree. When we say in the name of Jesus, we're saying that it lines up with what his word says his will is. When you pray that, there is such power in the name of Jesus. Amen. In the name of Jesus, his sovereign destiny for your life will be accomplished and no demon in hell can stop it. Amen. What the devil means for evil regarding your life, God will make it good if you'll just trust him tonight. Would you stand with me? I'm going to ask James if he would to come back to the piano. We're going to close out the time of response. I believe every time God speaks to us, he wants an answer. Amen. He wants a response. I don't know what the response is that God wants from you tonight. Each of us may be in different places spiritually, but I believe the Lord is speaking to us tonight. Amen. If you're not saved, if you've never given your life to Jesus, you've never asked him to forgive your sins, that's the most important response that you could give tonight. You say, God, I'm a sinner. I need you to be my savior. I know that what you did on the cross was for me and it's the only thing that will wash away my sins. And if that's where you're at tonight, I encourage you to just make that prayer in your own words. and Say, God, I want to live for you. I don't want to live bound up in sin anymore. I want to be free. And God will do that tonight. But I believe most of us in this room tonight, we're Christians. We're believers. We made that decision, thank God, a long time ago. Are you thankful that you're saved tonight? Do you remember when you got saved? Amen. I remember a lady in our church in Florida when we pastored there. She had lived a, a very uh, dark life. And I won't go into all the details, but drugs, prostitution, being abused, witchcraft, all kinds of things this woman had gone through. And she came up to me one Sunday morning. The Spirit of the Lord moved in that service in such a powerful way. And she was weeping. Her face was just covered with tears. And she came up and she said, she said, I, the Lord saved me. I prayed that prayer that you prayed just now, and I accepted Jesus. And she said it felt like rivers of water were just washing away all the junk, all the nasty stuff in my life. And she was not an old woman. She was probably maybe in her 30s, early 30s, late 20s. But she had been through so much. And Jesus in an instant, aren't you thankful? Jesus in an instant washed it all away. Amen. He did the same for you. Maybe you didn't have as much of a past as she did, but he set you free. Believers, have you been in the fire of adversity recently? The Holy Spirit, the Spirit of truth, is speaking over the lies of the enemy tonight. And he's telling you that what the devil meant for evil, if you believe God, God will make it good. If you'll just keep looking to Jesus, he's your source of strength and help. If you'll keep looking to the cross where, where Satan was utterly defeated, you can find victory. Amen. Number one, God allows the fire of adversity. We talked about that tonight. 
but it's always for our good in the end. Let's say, God, I may be in the storm of life, but Lord, I know you're with me. God, help me navigate the storm. Bring me out on the other side looking more like you. Amen? Maybe that's what you need to pray tonight. Number two, even those used by Satan for his wicked schemes will soon be astonished. Let something rise up within you tonight and say, Devil, you're not going to win. You're about to see what God is going to do in my family. Amen? You're about to see what God's going to do in my church. You're about to see what God's going to do in my health situation. The doctor's diagnosis may not look good, but devil, you're a liar. Jesus took stripes on his back for my healing. Amen? The devil's about to be astonished. He's about to be terrified because he threw everything at you, and you're still going to see victory if you believe him tonight. Number three, the enemy is soon to be terrified when his best efforts to cause you to be bound are loosed. God's plan for you tonight is to be free, to be loosed, to no longer be bound. Amen? And say, God, tonight I want to be free. I don't want to be bound by what somebody said about me 20 years ago. I don't want to be tormented by the people who said I'd never amount to anything or whatever the enemy's trying to bog you down with tonight. God wants you to be free. He wants you to be loosed. The last thing we talked about, even after further investigation, and scrutiny of the miracle deliverance, God's going to get the glory. Amen. No weapon formed is going to prosper. No tongue that rises in opposition of what God's trying to do in your personal life or in this church is going to prevail. God's truth is going to prevail. Amen. If we believe Him. Would you find a place to pray for just a few moments tonight and respond to God's Word in the way that He wants you to? Let's let the Holy Spirit submit into our hearts what He's telling us tonight, and then we'll close with a prayer of dismissal. But let's find a place to pray.